Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to this course on evolutionary game theory and applications. I am Dr. Gopal Sharan Parashari, Assistant Professor of Economics in the Department of HSS IIT Dharwar in Karnataka, India. So far, we have been discussing different aspects of uh, evolutionary game theory. So we, uh, we discussed in the last class that how to analyze the evolution of cooperation in this evolutionary setting. As we discussed that this uh, process of natural selection uh, requires a lot of competition, but despite that requirement of competition, we discussed in the last class that how different species of different animals, they develop some cooperation among them. So, we were uh, trying to analyze that uh, how this cooperation emerges uh, in the midst of uh, competition through evolutionary game theory and for that we were applying uh, this replicator dynamic. So, la in last class what we did, we took the example of prisoner's dilemma to analyze this emergence of cooperation in uh, biological systems or society in general. And then what we did, <coughs> we considered as we found that repeated interaction is very important and crucial requirement for evolution of cooperation. So, we considered 10 period repeated prisoner's dilemma to analyze our problem. So, we will move forward with the <coughs> same thing where we left in the last class. So, in the last class what we did, this was our basic prisoner's dilemma that we already know and we have been discussing since the beginning of this course. And then what we did, we make the similar this matrix form that we call normal form game for repeated prisoner's dilemma. Here the repeated prisoner's dilemma is for 10 period repeated prisoner's dilemma. We assume that we have a population, so we assume that we started with a population. The members of this population are endowed with three strategies, either they can be cooperators or they can be defectors or third option that we did differently from the conventional prisoner's dilemma is that we considered one strategy tit for tat that these people, these members of this population has this one more strategy here. Okay. So, what we are doing, we are randomly drawing two players from this population and these two players from this population are engaged in a repeated prisoner's dilemma for 10 period and we come up with this game table or what we call normal form game for this prisoner's dilemma. Okay. So, uh, in last class I explained how we fill up all these entries in each cell, for example, how this defect comma defect interact for 10 times then they get 30 and 30. So, I will not repeat that. So, we will move forward. Then what we did in order to apply replicator dynamic to our setting, what we did we wrote the average fitness of all these strategy types. Okay. So, we consider for that we consider that uh, the population mix in the population is like follows for a strategy mix. So, this P T C what we considered this as I, as I earlier told in the last class also that this T is if we talk about this P T C the notation goes like this, this T is time period T period T and this C is cooperator. Similarly, in P T D this T is time period and D is defector. Similarly, here P T T is the proportion of tit for tat where T is the period and capital T is tit for tat. So, this is how we define uh, these three proportions respectively P T C is proportions of cooperators, P T T is proportion of tit for tat and P T D is proportion of defectors in the population. Okay. And we also define, we also know that the sum of all these proportions P T C plus P T T plus P T D is nothing but 1 
because only these three types are there in the whole population. So, from this we have this relationship also between P T D and P C T, P T C and P T T. Okay. So, having done that what we did? We wrote the average fitness for all these strategy types for we wrote fitness of cooperator like this with the help of the, uh, this normal form game table that we developed in the last class. Then we did fitness of defector like this okay, and fitness of tit for tat. Then if we put that I called equation number 1. Now, if I put this relationship into these equation set 1, what I can do? In the place of P T D, I can write 1 minus P T C minus P T T in all these equations. Similarly, here also, similarly, here also. Here I can replace this with 1 minus P T C minus P T T. So, if I do that in place of P T D, if I write this, then I get this different set of equation, this I call as equation set 2 or equation number 2. Okay. So, now we got <coughs> the fitness of cooperator type strategy in as a function of P T C and P T T that is the proportion of cooperators in the uh, population and proportion of tit for tat in the population respectively. Similarly, I have written this fitness of defector also as a function of P T C and P T T and same for tit for tat as a function of P T C and P T T. Okay. Now, we started looking at the relative fitness of these strategies related to each other. So, first we started with what happens or I can say how strategy type say tit for tat what I will do in short I will write is T F T. T F T does against cooperator. Okay. So, for that what I will do if I, I will see when the fitness of cooperator is more than fitness of tit for tat or vice versa. I can also see when the fitness of tit for tat is more than fitness of cooperator. So, what that what will we do? So, the tit for tat that I am calling T f t should do better or what do, what do I mean by do, saying that should do better? That means, has better fitness. Okay. So, T f t should have better fitness against cooperator when it will happen when the fitness of TFT is more than fitness of cooperator. So, that we can write here with the help of this equation set number 2. So, what is the fitness of tit for tat? It is 28 plus 22 P T C plus 22 P T T should be greater than the fitness of cooperator which is this 10 plus 40 P T C plus 40 P T T. We can solve this, if we solve this then we come to know that this is nothing but 40 minus 22 P T C plus 40 minus 22 P T T should be less than 28 minus 10. Okay. So, this comes out to be 18 P T C plus 18 P T T less than 18. So, the condition becomes P T C plus P T T is less than 1. So, this is our condition. What condition? That if this is hold true that P T C plus P T T is less than 1 or in words we can say when the proportion of uh, tit for tat type members of the population and uh, proportion of cooperator type members in the population. If the sum of these two proportions is less than 1, then tit for tat is doing better compared to the cooperators. Okay. So, this is the condition. 
the TFT has better fitness against against cooperators if PTC plus PTT is less than 1. Okay. So, what does it mean? This is first thing, this is our condition. So, if it if if it is hold true, then TFT is better compared to cooperators. But if we see this condition, then what we can look at that we already know that PTC plus PTT plus PTD is 1. So, our condition says that this is less than 1. What does, does that mean? This means that P T D the proportion of a fraction of defectors is positive. That means, there are some defectors present in the population. So, it means that if there are few defectors present in population, then TFT is better fit compared to cooperators. Okay. This is nothing but condition what this condition mathematically found out this is the interpretation of that. How about if we write this condition like this that it is less than 0, but if I say P T C plus P T T is equal to 1. In that case, both T F T and cooperators will have equal fitness. Okay. So, this is what our condition with uh, condition of fitness of TFT against cooperators. How about if we move further then how about fitness of tit for tat members and defectors. Till now we saw what happens when a TFT type member interacts with the cooperator. Okay. So, how do they fare related to each other? Now, we will see how a TFT member or the member we can say like this, how the member endowed with the TFT strategy in the population, if they interact with defectors, then how do they do, like how fit they are related to defectors. So, that is what we will see. So, for that we, have, we will again do the same thing with the help of this previous equation here, we will compare the fitness of defector compared to the fitness of tit for tat. So, we can do that. So, we can say that T F T has higher fitness against defectors if so condition we can write from here. So, this is 28 plus 22 P T C, 28 plus 22 P T C plus 22 P T C, this is the average fitness of uh, for tat, it should be greater than 30 plus 50 P T C plus 5 P T T. So, this should be T. So, this should be the condition. So, that I am taking from equation set number 2. So, this this is the fitness of tit for tat, this should be greater than fitness of defector, this, this I have written. Okay. So, if I solve it, I can easily solve it and this turns out, the condition turns out to be 
condition for that it for that to be more fit or better fit compared to defector this condition is p t t should be greater than 2 plus 28 p t c divided by 17. Okay. So, if the fraction of this is what the left hand side this thing is what this is proportion of tit for tat endowed members of the population. So, if this fraction of tit for tat is more than this value 2 plus 28 p t c divided by 17 then t f t has higher fitness compared to defectors. What does, it, does that mean? It means that proportion of proportion of T F T endowed members in the population should be significantly high. So, if the proportion of tit for tat members in this population or I can say the members who are endowed with the tit for tat strategy that proportion should be higher significantly high then we can say that TFT members are relatively more fit compared to the defectors the members of the population who are endowed with the defect strategy. Okay. So, this is the interpretation of this condition. Okay. If the opposite condition is true if simply we can say p t t is less than this value threshold value 2 plus 28 p t c upon 17. Then if this is true then defectors will have defectors will have better fitness compared to T F T members. Okay. So, now we will use this uh, whatever we have got we have analyzed till now to draw something called phase diagram as I told in the last class itself we will draw phase diagram. Okay. So, we will do that. So, suppose for drawing this I will draw this graph like this suppose on this axis we have p t t the proportion of t f t uh, type population members and here I will draw p t c proportion of cooperators. Okay. This point origin this is this represents 0 comma 0 okay. that means 0 cooperators and 0 uh, t f t. Okay. So, this phase diagram will be draw he, we will be drawing here. So, what is the condition for first condition that we got? I will call this equation number 3. This is equation number 3 and this I will call equation number 4. Okay. So, first I will draw equation number 3. So, it says P T C plus P T T is less than 1. Then T F T members are more fit compared to the cooperators. So, we can simply draw this this is nothing but if we write it like this P T C plus P T T equal to 1 this is nothing but a straight line. Okay. We are taking P T T here and P T C on this axis. So, suppose this point is there this is or we can take little say so, this point this is 1 comma 0 here it is 0 comma 1 okay if we draw this line this is this line okay so the condition says when ptc plus ptt is less than 1 so that is below this line this whole area that is coming below this line this represented this is represented by this condition. So, this entire reason if I call this 
in this entire region T f t is more fit against cooperators okay and on this line as i told while interpreting interpreting the condition this line is nothing but this mathematically this equation <coughs> so here tft and cooperators are equally fit okay so below this line reason that that describes the reason or the condition ptc plus ptt less than 1 and that was the condition that uh, required for tft being more fit compared to cooperators and on the line both are equally fit next we drew the next condition that is was uh, relative fitness of tft and defectors that condition was ptt should be greater than 2 plus 28 ptc divided by 17 that i call equation number 4 here okay so this this is the condition for tft being more fit compared to defectors so we will see how we can draw this in the graph so if ptc is 0 that means we are on ptt axis that is x axis conventionally so then this pt t becomes as per this condition this becomes 2 upon 17 so we can put 2 upon 17 somewhere here 2 upon 17 okay and this is an upward line so we can draw this line like this this condition okay so this is 2 upon 27 so it says that if proportion of tft is more than this value okay that means this line that we started from this 2 by 17 so this boundary is dtft boundary we can say interaction between defector and tft so left to this line if we talk about as the condition says for tf2 to be more fit this ptt should be greater than this value so simply interpreting this we can say that the reason which is left to this line dtft that we may call reason number 1 so here in dtft left to this line the defector is better fit or more fit and the reason which is right of the dtft line that i uh, recently drew the tft is more fit compared to defector so i can call this reason number 1 okay which is left to this dtft and this is reason number 2 i can call right now for the sake of explaining this this is right to this line so in reason number 1 for area 1 or reason 1 what is happening defect is more fit okay area number 2 here tft is more fit okay so this is how we can draw this now we will see how about a cooperator interacting with defector then what happens so, so, so till now what we did we try to find out that how when cooperator interacts with tft then what is the condition that tft is better okay we can analyze other way also and then we saw how tft is better when a tft interacts with defector so this is how we got two conditions in the previously we saw these condition as equation number 3 and equation number 4 okay so now we will see how what cooperator against defector okay so we can say that 
what will happen basically. So, we can say a cooperator is more fit against a defector when. So, what we will do? We will simply compare the fitness of these two people. So, it will happen a cooperator will be more fit compared to defector only when the fitness of cooperator will be more than defector. Okay? So, that is what we will do from our equation set 2. So, what is the uh, fitness of cooperator according to that? We can see there it is 10 plus 40 p t c plus 40 p t t. So, what should happen the condition 10 plus 40 p t c plus 40 p t t should be greater than should be the fitness should be more if we want it to be more fit compared to defector which is 30 plus 50 p t c and 5 p t t 30 plus 50 p t c plus 5 p t t. So, this is nothing but what I am doing if the uh, fitness of cooperator is more than fitness of defector then cooperator is more fit. I can solve this if I solve this I get p t t should be greater than 20 plus 10 p t c divided by 35. Okay. So, if this, this condition is true then, so I can write if this proportion of tit for tat is like this is greater than certain threshold, then what will happen? Then cooperator will have better fitness or more fitness. against a defector. Again we can plot this condition also in the same graph. So, if I write this if I put p t c equal to 0 then I get p t t value on the x axis equal to 20 upon 35 and this is also increasing line. So, it will be like this. So, suppose this 20 upon 35 will be here somewhere and if I join with the, this will come like this, this line a straight line. So, this is your D c boundary here defector and co uh, cooperators are interacting. Okay. So, now I can write to find three reasons this I can call reason 2 this is reason 3. So, basically as the condition says that when p t t is greater than this threshold value. That means, left to this d c line here, this d c line which I have drawn, left to this line d c, what is happening? The defector is has more fitness and right to this d c line in reason 3 in this diagram, cooperator has best fit, uh, more fitness compared to defector. Okay. So, to summarize this I can show you the overall diagram here. So, now this is complete diagram. So, this was the first condition that we drew this line p t c plus p t t is less than 1. Okay. Below this line we, decide, we found out that tit for tat is better than cooperator. Okay. Then we drew this d t f t line starting with 2 upon 17 okay, and then d c line starting with this 20 upon 35 with the help of our condition that we found out from uh, mathematical analysis as we saw in the previous graph. So, now we can say that in reason 1 defector is best and cooperator is worst. Okay. In the reason 2 tit for tat is best and cooperator is worst and in reason 3 the last one tit for tat is best and defector is worst. It is based upon our analysis that we did in the previous slides. Okay. So, now we can just interpret few things here. 
for example, suppose we start with a population mix somewhere here. So, what will happen? Because defector is has highest fitness here and cooperator is best. So, what will happen? The population of defector will flourish in this region. Okay. So, where is the direction where defector are more? So, here cooperator increase in this direction, here defector sorry tit for tat increases. This point origin, this tells as I told you 0 comma 0, this means that there is no cooperator and tit for tat, only defectors are here. So, that means in this direction, southerly direction, uh, what will happen? The defector will be more. So, if we start at a population mix from here, then what will happen? This will go in the direction where defectors are increasing, because defector is best here, defector has highest fitness okay, and cooperator is worst. So, this can this will go into southerly direction, southern direction. So, this can go to in this direction also. Okay. What does that mean? That both tit for tat and cooperator both are decreasing or this can go in this direction also, where only tit for tat is uh, tit for tat is increasing and cooperator are decreasing. So, this is how we can draw this uh, phase diagram to analyze the relative uh, fitness of uh, these three strategies in the population. Okay. I hope it is clear. So, now what we will what we will do with the help of this phase diagram that given this now we will see in what direction this population will evolve. We simply saw little bit here that if we start a population here then what will happen? We will see little bit more like this here. Then as we did in the hogged up game also with the help of replicator dynamic we try to find out we found out in fact this attractors. Okay. So, we will see what are the attractors here in this case and then we will see whether this uh, this dynamics this dynamic replicator dynamic is able to co sustain the cooperation or not in this population. Okay. So, these kind of things we will see in little detail here now. So, suppose we start with some population mix when there is a low fraction of tit for tat a very low fraction of tit for tat. So, I already told you that in this direction tit for tat increases. Okay. So, we are starting from somewhere here that means low population of tit for tat. So, what will happen? So, as I told you from the previous diagram here in this reason, reason number 1 defectors are best or most fit okay. and then as we saw in the previous diagram, what was the case? Cooperator is best here cooperators are worst. Okay. So, what will happen? This dynamics will move towards more defectors, because defectors are most fit in this region. So, this defectors will drive out cooperators and tit for tat. So, with the as these defectors have highest fitness in this region. So, they will drive out all the cooperators and tit for tat from the population. So, clearly we can see that we are starting at some point and then this replicator dynamic is taking this population mix to towards this point. So, we can say this is a attractor in this case in this scenario and what is attractor? When everyone in the population is a defector. Okay. So, we started with a population mix which has very low population of tit for tat, very low fraction of tit for tat and we see due to this dynamic population in the end eventually becomes full of defectors, everyone is a defector okay, which is a attractor in this dynamic. So, we can say eventually there is no tit for tat and no cooperator. So, this is not a very desirable thing as I already told in the previous class that this has some social relevance also that how to sustain cooperation, we need cooperation in the society. So, if we see this then we come out it turns out that there will be no cooperator and norm for cooperation will not be there in the society, but we should not worry we should see further what can happen in other cases. Suppose now we start with some population mix when there is a high fraction for tit for tat. Okay. So, as I told you tit for tat increases in this direction 
So, now we are starting with a significantly high proportion of tit for tat. Then what will happen? So, here tit for tat is there and in this reason what was the case? We can always go back to our previous graph. Here defector is best, cooperator is worst okay? and in this reason tit for tat is best, cooperator is worst. So, on this in the same line what we can do? We can think that here defector is worst, west and cooperator is worst and here tit for tat is in this region number 2, T f t is best and cooperator is bust here also we can write this in reason number 2 t f t is best best means it has highest fitness and cooperator is worst in reason number 3 t f t is best and defector is worst. Okay. So, now what will happen as t f t uh, num, proportion of t f t is high here. So, what they will do t f t will so, what is the difference between T f t and cooperator? Cooperator always cooperates, but T f t what it does? It punishes also. It gives uh, equal uh, opposite treatment to the defectors. So, it will cooperate with cooperators, but when somebody comes who is not uh, cooperating and playing self uh, with the self, uh, selfish uh, nature, then what it will do? It will punish. So, what will happen? So, as the uh, proportion of tit for tat is more, so, this tit for tat will quickly retaliate against defectors. Okay. So, defector will take advantage of will take advantage of cooperators, okay. but there are enough T f t members. So, this is the difference between the previous case and this case. Now, here in this example T f t is high fraction is there. So, the defector cannot take advantage of T f t. Here what was happening in the previous case? Since T f t were low fraction, so there were more cooperators and defector were taking advantage of cooperators and was flourishing on the cost of cooperators, okay? because there were not enough T f t who can punish them, who can punish defectors for their selfish uh, way of playing the game or selfish behavior. Okay? But here in this case, when we start with significantly higher number of T f t players, then what they will do? They will retaliate and punish defectors. Okay? So, this dynamic will drive the system from this point to this way okay? and eventually what will happen? It will move in this direction when the system comes to a stage where almost the the uh, population mix goes towards tit for, uh, tft tit for tat so this shows this point shows that all of them are tft so this system will move in this this direction okay so this is how we can see how this population mix when we start with a high fraction of tft behaves differently when we start with as we did in the previous case with the low fraction of tft okay so, this is the difference. So, it shows that in this case the cooperation will sustain. So, what is necessary for cooperation to sustain? For cooperation to sustain, we should have high fraction of tit for tat. Okay? So, we saw here when this low fraction of TFT was there, cooperation did not sustain. How? As in the end everyone became defector, system came to this point where everyone is defector. 
So, that is why I am saying cooperation did not sustain okay, when, when there was a low fraction of tit for tat, but when we start with high fraction of tit for tat then cooperation is evolutionarily stable or we can say cooperation is sustainable. Okay. It is not going to the case of previous case when everyone becoming defector. Now, it is going in this direction when everybody is tit for tat and tit for tat cooperates with the cooperator. So, this is how we see that when we start with a high fraction of tit for tat, then cooperation becomes sustainable. Okay. So, as I already told you that for cooperation to sustain, <coughs> it is just not enough to have only cooperators as we see in the first case that when we started with the low fraction of tit for that then cooperation did not get sustained okay cooperation is evolutionarily stable only when we have high fraction for tit for tat so we can say for cooperation to sustain in a population it is just not enough to have cooperators only or we just don't need to have enough people do, who are nicely behavior who have nice behavior okay so players must also be ready to punish cheaters and then only they are driven out of population. Okay. So, that is the meaning of this high fraction of tit for tat. So, this high fraction of tit for tat the what they will do? De they will punish the defectors and so that the defectors are driven out of the population. So, that is why our system goes like this to this point where the cooperation becomes sustainable. So, again I am repeating that if we want we can talk about society also that if we want in society that uh, cooperators are there then if we want to drive out the defectors then it is not just we should have the people who are behaving nice. We should also have the people who are, who are courageous, courageous enough to drive out the defectors or self, self motivated person. Okay. Then only when they get punished by these tit for tat kind of people or members then only these cheaters or defectors will be driven out of this population. So, the message is when we have high fraction of tit for tat then only the cooperation is sustainable. We will little bit more analyze this that now we have got population at this point when we have sustained cooperation in this population, but there is a, this is also a very tricky situation we will see how. So, what happens now suppose we start with this point. 1 comma 0 when everyone is cooperative or tit for tat. Okay. So, when we start from here we can consider that at this point a small mutation is there. Okay. So, what they will do? So, the idea is so right now the mix is all tit for tat we can say. Okay. But if we see what is the difference between cooperators and tit for tat? So, the difference in the behavior of cooperators and tit for tat is visible only when they interact with defectors. So, a tit for tat person will punish defector, will defect with the defector and cooperator will always cooperate. Now, suppose in the population there is no defector, then both cooperators and tit for tat are going to be cooperative only. Okay. Then we cannot distinguish in the uh, these two strategy types. So, this is the case now. Now, we are at this point when all of them are tit for tat. Okay. So, all of them are cooperating because there is no defector. Now, suppose somehow there is a small mutation of cooperators in this population, then what happens? There will be few, very few cooperators in this tit for tat population, but nobody can distinguish the behavior of these two as both of them are going to cooperate with each other because cooperator always cooperates and tit for tat always. always uh, cooperates in the return of cooperation. Okay. So, now suppose this mutation there is a more mutation and this concentration of or the fraction of cooperator keeps on increasing. Okay. So, what will happen? The population will move in this direction. Okay. How? So, this is the point 1 comma 0 when all of them are tit for tat okay. and on this line as we have already seen previously we saw that in p t c plus p t t is 1, then both of them have tit for tat and cooperators both of them have equal fitness. Okay. 
So, with the mutation when some cooperators are starting from this point, then there is no change in the fitness also and they are indifferent, they are same because both of them are cooperating with each other. Okay? So, now suppose with the more mutation, this keeps on increasing. Okay? So, this keeps on in increasing the cooperators and they come to this boundary of zone 1, some point in the zone 1, but on the boundary. Okay? So, this due to this mutation, this mixture comes on boundary of zone 1, some point like this. Now, suppose at this stage, till now everything is fine, okay? because tit for tat and cooperator both are okay with each other and both are both show cooperative behavior only, because there is no defector. Okay? But now, suppose when this mix has come to this point, okay, what will happen now? Now, suppose at this point, there is some mutation introduces few defectors. Okay? Then what will happen? This population mix will just come inside at this point because some mutation is there. Okay? So, what will happen? Now, the population mix has come into interior of zone 1. Till now, when the population mix was only cooperators were there, only uh, defectors, sorry, tit for tat were there, then we were on the boundary itself, here, here, somewhere on these boundary points. But as, as soon as we are in the boundary of zone 1, then any mutation can drive or drift this population mix into interior of zone 1. And as soon as we get into zone 1, what does that mean? That now we have at this point, now we have few defectors and cooperators and tit for tat. And we already know that what happens in zone 1? In zone 1, defectors have highest fitness. and cooperators are worst as we already did. So, what will happen now? As soon as this population mix drift to this point in the interior of zone 1, then will these defectors will start flourishing okay, on the cost of cooperators. And finally, as we have already seen how if we start with a point here in zone 1, how does that go to, how that goes to this 0, 0, all that uh, defectors. Okay. So, what will happen? Same thing will happen as soon as this population drifts into this point. So, this population is dominated by defectors now. Okay. And this is how this cooperation that we were appreciating till now may become unstable. Okay. So, this is the idea. I can again tell you that we started with here this point, here only tit for tat were there. Now, due to mutation, few cooperators came to in this population mix. Okay then this started moving in this direction. Okay? And with increased number of cooperators due to mutation, we reach to some point, some boundary point in zone 1. Okay? And at this stage, some mutation, if some mutation introduces new defectors, few defectors, then what will happen? We drift into this population mix drifts into interior of zone 1. And in this zone 1, we already know that defectors have highest fitness and then they thrive upon cooperators and then this whole system goes into this direction when there is no cooperation. Okay? So, this is how it is happening. So, for this thing we can also explain with a different story instead of uh, this natural selection what is happening? Imitation is happening now. Okay? So, suppose what, what, is, what do we mean by imitation? So, a strategy with a, which has higher fitness or higher payoff that grows in the population because more people imitate it. Okay? So, some behavior of some members in the population, if it is giving higher fitness, then other members tend to imitate it. This we call imitation. So, instead of this mutation in uh, the process of natural selection, we are talking about imitation here. So, now suppose we start with that this point where all of the members are tit for tat type. Okay? So, as I already told you 
that cooperators in tit for tat behave differently only when they encounter a defector. For a non defector, both of them are same and both of them cooperate. Okay. So, in the population now, when everybody is tit for tat, only an observer can only see cooperation because no defector is there. So, tit for tat is also cooperating and cooperators are also cooperating. Okay. So, what will happen? The, the behavior of cooperators and tit for tat is not distinguishable, it is indistinguishable because only people, only cooperation is being seen because there is no defector. Okay. Now, suppose some new cohort of members join this uh, population, then what will happen? For these new cohorts, they have never seen this uh, defect or defection, they have only seen only cooperation as because there is no defector. So, tit for tat is also cooperating and the co if cooperators are there, they are also cooperating. So, what these this new cohort will start doing? They will mistake this tit for tat as cooperate cooperation okay? and they will adopt this cooperator trait. Okay? So, they will start imitating cooperation because everybody else else is also cooperation cooperating. Okay? But due to this mistake, what will happen? as defection is not being seen here, only one can observe is cooperation. So, they will also imitate cooperation without realizing that one should stop cooperating when other person chooses defect. So, this is the idea. We have already done tit for tat what it does. It cooperates until the other person is also cooperating. Okay? Till other person cooperates, this person cooperates, but when the other person starts playing selfishly or defects, then tit for tat will punish him by defect. Okay? But for the new cohort, they are just seeing cooperation. So, they are imitating cooperation without realizing this thing, the behavior of real behavior of tit for tat and this think that only cooperation is there and they do not know that they should stop cooperating when other person is not cooperating. Okay? So, this is how this population forgets that how this cooperation is was becoming stable in this population. So, as we saw initially, how this cooperation was being stable because of the tit for tat strategy. But if you keep on doing only nice behavior that is cooperation, then we saw that cooperation is not sustainable. Cooperation was sustainable because of tit for tat that you are ready to punish the wrongdoers, the defectors. Okay? But this new cohort is not realizing this thing and they are thinking that only cooperation is the key. Okay? So, what will happen? Now, suppose in this situation when this new cohort has come into this population and they have imitated cooperation without realizing the real tit for tat strategy, then what will happen? Any innovation in the form of defector, okay? what they will do? They will start outperforming cooperator okay? as we know from the uh, game matrix. Okay? This depicts this point, this line. So, what, what will happen then? So, in this case, this new cohort, now suppose one more cohort joins, so they will see that defector is better rewarded in this population. Okay? So, then they will start imitating defect and eventually what will happen? What will happen? So, they will start adopting defector and thus the whole population will become defector and the norm for cooperation becomes unstable as we saw. Okay? And in the sense of society, we can say that society will drift from altruism to selfishness. Okay? I will again explain that everyone, we started with this point when everyone is tit for tat. Then what happened? These people, because there is no defector, so the observable behavior, behavior of tit for tat is only cooperation. Okay? So, nobody knows that anything else can happen because there is only cooperation. Then suppose some new cohort joins, then they will start imitating cooperation okay, without realizing the true strategy of tit for tat. They will not learn how to punish the wrongdoers okay. and they keep on doing this. Then suppose at some point, some person innovates or behaves differently with defector, then he will get higher payoff with the game matrix we know. Then this game will come like this here population mix and then eventually this will go to this. Okay? So, for a new cohort or the newcomer, 
that will find he will find that defect is more rewarding. So, then everybody will start imitating defect and finally, this whole society will become defector. Okay. So, this is how this cooperation is unstable, this is how we saw the instability of the cooperation in this population. Okay. So, this is where uh, we will stop this course. So, we learned uh, in this replicator dynamic, we saw how to find out attractors okay, and how to how we see this different kind of behavior, whether cooperation can be sustained or not. Okay. So, thank you very much. My name is Jilat Sam and I teach sociology at uh, IIT Kanpur. Uh, one of the things you must have noticed uh, if you read or if you talk to people around you is that they often refer to uh, something called globalization or they often say we live in a global world. What does this mean? Uh, today I will tell you about how to think about globalization or interpret the word global in a sociological manner. When sociologists refer to globalization, they refer to three things. The first is that there are, uh, that it involves uh, transplanetary processes, which means that something is going on uh, across multiple borders, right? Uh, the second is that it involves heightened liquidity and uh, interconnected flows. Uh, now, by liquidity, and this is a term that uh, was coined by the sociologist uh, Zygmunt Bauman, uh, we refer to the increasing interconnectedness of things across the globe, but we also refer to uh, increasing instability across the world, which means that potentially something that is occurring many million, uh, okay, many kilometers away from you. Um, actually influences the place that you live in. So, if uh, there is uh, a natural disaster happening in one part of the world, maybe that causes uh, people to migrate from that area and they come and settle where you stay. So, that is what we mean by liquidity. And of course, when we are talking about liquidity, we are talking about things that are really moving from one place to the other. Now, the third aspect and this is something that uh, you may not conventionally come across in the way people use globalization, is that of structures. So, uh, let us take an example. Uh, supposing I as an Indian citizen wish to visit uh, a foreign country, let us say I want to go to South Africa. Can I just pick up my bags? and hop on the next plane and go to South Africa. Any logical person is going to say, no, wait, you need to have documents such as your passport or visa. Now, this passport or this visa is a representation of the larger structure that governs how people move across borders. So, we have things like border control, uh, national security agencies that uh, consider what kind of people are going to move from one place to the other, correct? So, uh, when we think about globalization, an average person typically tends to think about things moving or people moving from place to place. As sociologists, we also consider that there are structures that facilitate or direct this movement across multiple borders. 